I think most of us approach this challenge with the belief that we want to try to get back where we were before, where we were a decade ago. And many of our politics and policies are built on the premise that we want to get back to the world we knew before the collapse of our financial markets in 2008. I want to tell you today that that is the last place we want to go. Because embedded in this crisis are a set of tremendous opportunities. But to realize those opportunities, we've got to change. We have to change ourselves and we have to change our assumptions in order to change the future. We simply can't go back to where we were in the past. Because the good economy masks the fact that the underlying systems on which we rely are based on assumptions that are simply no longer valid. Getting the private sector economy going again, as important as that is, will not by itself reverse the pattern of disinvestment in our general fund. Putting Oregonians back to work again, as important as that is, will not by itself reduce our prison population or the cost of health care. It will not increase the number of children who are ready to learn when they get to school or the number of high school graduates that go on to get post-secondary education or training. And the reason is very simple, although perhaps not obvious. The systems on which we rely to, to provide these important public services are failing us. They're based on a set of assumptions that are no longer valid in the 21st century, and no amount of money or investment will change that. We need to change the systems themselves. And to make that point, I want to offer an analogy by comparing the systems through which we provide important public services with the development of a successful organization, let's say a business. Now, most successful businesses start with an environment in which investment produces growth and prosperity. But as the environment in which the business operates begins to change, if the business doesn't create a new business model that reflects the new realities, not the old, the growth of the business begins to taper off and then gradually decline. So General Motors would be the example of a company that failed to learn this lesson. It continued to build big gas-guzzling cars in the face of high gasoline prices uh, and uh, concern over global climate change. Now, a successful business, when it recognizes that the world is beginning to change, that the circumstances are beginning to change, creates a new business model based on the new circumstances rather than the old one, which, which results into an, in a new growth curve, right? Now, the problem is that for a short period of time, the new model and the old model have to coexist. And the area between the new business model and the old has been called the area of paradox. And that's an area where there's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of churning. People are nervous. They recognize that what they're doing isn't working for them anymore, but it's familiar. And they're afraid to let go of the old model because they don't know what the future holds. I would submit to you that this is exactly where we are in the United States and in the state of Oregon. In education, in health care, in our approach to energy policy, transportation policy, in economic development, and in the, in the way we seek to manage our natural resources. The point is we need a new business model. We need a new way of delivering public services that reflects the realities of 2011, not the realities of 1995. Now, obviously, we can't transform all these systems at once. But we have to start with education and health care, and we have to do it now. And I have put proposals before the legislature to do exactly that. And I want to emphasize here, I want to make sure that you clearly understand that making these changes and transforming these systems is absolutely essential. It's essential for our long-term economic recovery. It's essential for building the workforce of the 21st century. It's essential for raising our per capita income back up above the national average. In short, making these changes and making these transformations is essential to building a secure and prosperous future. But ironically, making these changes is probably going to be a lot harder than putting people back to work. Because clinging to the familiar, clinging to the old ways of doing things is human nature. Reaching for the possible requires an act of faith. It's not unlike the ropes game, any of you have been to outdoor school. They put you up on a post 10 feet above the ground with a rope that you're holding onto, and off over here is another post and another rope. You're supposed to get from one post to the other, and the only way you can do it is to lean out and for a moment let go of the old rope in order to grab the new one. 
The old rope is the old, are the old systems, the old business model. The new rope is what we have to create and build. So to be clear, the opportunity here, our moment in time, and quite frankly, the leadership challenge involved is to be able to describe the new systems, to describe the new business models, if you will, in healthcare and in education, in a way that people can see them and believe in them and let go of the past in order to embrace them. So to make that leap of faith, and surely we have to make it, requires imagination, it requires a willingness to challenge our assumptions, and it requires a strong sense of community. And I believe that we can see and reach that new rope. None of this is going to be easy. Nothing worthwhile ever is. And we shouldn't underestimate the magnitude of the challenges we face, but we should never for a minute doubt our ability to successfully meet them. Oregonians are a great and resilient people. We've faced tough times before, and we can do it again. During my campaign and during my inauguration, I said that somewhere in America, a state needs to be able to demonstrate that we can weather this kind of challenge without losing our sense of community, without losing our commitment to one another, and emerge stronger and more united than when we began. That is a path we've started down. We're already reaching for that new rope. I'm asking you to join me in letting go of the old one. Thank you very much.